Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about something. First I want to say, I know I'm wearing the sh same shirt as in a past video, but that's just kind of the type of person I am. I really like this shirt, and I'm not one of those YouTubers who's going to be like wearing a different shirt every time. So if you want that, find another channel. Today I'm here to talk about um, loving your body as is, and how you can love your body the way it is, but still want to change your body. And it seems like it's a kind of obvious thing that you can feel both of these ways at the same time. But the way people often talk about your relationship to your body seems to suggest that some people think that these things are somehow opposed to each other. And I personally think that they actually go together more. I see this come up in at least two different places. The two places I see it come up most are in body positivity and weight loss, and in transgender people and our relationships to our own bodies, especially our body's sex characteristics. I want to talk about the weight loss thing first. This is not something that affects me very much personally. I'm pretty skinny, I've always been pretty skinny, I'm not usually trying to lose weight. But I see a lot of rhetoric in society about people's bodies, and I want to talk about it because some of it bothers me a lot, some of the things that people say. I've been seeing a lot of body positivity, and specifically fat positivity, lately, and I really like this. And I've been seeing some people react negatively to it. For example, sometimes people will react negatively to the existence of plus-size models, especially when the plus-size models really are fat. Like, you can have a plus-size model who is just a very tall person with a big frame, but they don't look fat. But then when you have someone who really looks fat, that's when people start getting negative about it. And this bothers me. And one of the things that I hear people say, I hear people say stuff like, oh, this is glorifying obesity, things like that. First of all, I don't agree with that. There's not really much positive depiction of fat people in our society, so if anything, we seem to be glorifying thin thinness. Just depicting the occasional fat person here and there in a positive light is not the same thing as glorifying those body types. So I want to make that clarification clear. Like, you have to look at the big picture when you're discussing these issues. But the second thing is that the way some people talk about the issue of obesity and weight and weight loss, it seems to suggest that there are a lot of people, and I've actually heard people explicitly voice this, there are a lot of people who believe that it is good to body shame fat people because they want to make them feel guilty about their bodies so that they lose weight. And I've heard people say things like, oh, these people are placing an additional burden on the medical system and they're driving up my health care costs things like that. And this really bothers me, uh, for a lot of reasons. First of all, I agree that there are some ways in which very obese people are placing an extra burden on the medical system. And I don't necessarily think that's a good thing, and I generally want to help people lose weight if they want to, uh, especially if they're obese. But the thing that I really disagree with is this assumption that people are going to be more likely to lose weight if they feel bad about themselves. Like, that just seems ridiculous to me. Like, I know for myself, I tend to make, universally, all across different parts of my life, I tend to make better decisions and better de cho choices when I feel good about myself. Like, if someone is sitting there and shaming me for something that I'm not doing as well as I would like to be doing, that's not going to help me to do a better job at that thing. Like, a good example of this is like, when I was a kid and I would lose my temper, sometimes adults would criticize me for losing my temper, and I'm like, that, that doesn't help me to not lose my temper in the future. Like, you need to teach me better ways to handle my emotions, things like that. Uh, and I think, like, the topic of weight loss is like this too. So, I want to emphasize, like, so say you want to change something about your body. You're overweight, or maybe you're underweight, or there's something else, like you're just not in shape. I think that it's better for your motivation if you first accept your body as is, and love and appreciate your body 
as is before trying to change it. And you can then say, hey, I want to change this thing about my body. So, okay, this is, we've been talking mostly about people's weight. This is also relevant to transgender people, because a lot of transgender people have a not-so-great relationship with their body. Typically, trans people have this disconnect between their gender identity and the sex they were assigned at birth. So, for example, for me, I was assigned male at birth, but my identity, if this is male and this is female, my identity is maybe somewhere in the middle, maybe a little bit towards the female side. So there's this disconnect between my body's sex characteristics, like I have some facial hair, I have a deep voice, uh, things like that and these cultural expectations of what it means to be feminine, and so on. I see in a lot of trans communities this, like, a lot of dialogue centering around hating your body. And recently I made this video about transmedicalism, which is this idea that you need to have dysphoria in order to really be trans. I disagree with it, I'd encourage you to watch that video if you haven't. But I think, I think like, if you're talking about how to handle these things as a trans person, I personally think that you can do both things. You can want to change your body, but you can also learn to love and appreciate your body as is. Uh, these things don't necessarily need to be opposed to each other. And I tend to think that people, just like with weight loss, just like with any sort of life choice, that people make better decisions, better choices, when they are in a better place mentally, when they're happier, they're more content. One thing that I see in some trans communities, I see people sort of promoting a sense of desperation. I want to make clear, I don't want to judge another trans person for having a sense of desperation. Like, if you're trans and you hate your body and you're like, wow, I hate these characteristics of my body, I really want to change them, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is people forcing that narrative on other people. And I feel this way when I come into some trans communities. People are like, they either don't acknowledge me as being trans if I don't express enough hate of the male sex characteristics of my body, or they focus on it and amplify it when I do emphasize the male characteristics of my body that I'm not crazy about and that I would like to change. And I don't like that. Like, I feel like that puts pressure on me. It makes me feel pressured to do things like HRT, hormone therapy, hormonal transition, something that I don't really want to do for a long list of reasons. And I feel like some trans people put pressure on me to make that sort of modification to my body when it's something that I don't really want. I want to accept my body characteristics as is. Now this is not necessarily the path for all trans people. A lot of trans people want to hormonally transition, and I think that's great. I think that if people are able to accept themselves as is a little bit more though, they'll be better able to make that decision. One thing that I hear a lot, especially in non-binary communities, people express a lot of doubt and questioning of like, oh, do I hate my body, especially people assigned female at birth, they're like, do I hate my body because of gender dysphoria or because of sexism and misogyny? And I'm like, I don't know, I'm not you, I can't tell you what's going on with your body. But I think that if we get into a better mindset and learn to appreciate what we can about our body, we'll be better able to sort those things out. So yeah, that's what I have to say. Um, I hope you found this illuminating. Yeah, thank you.